Kia ora folks, nice to see you again. So this short little clip's about uh, constructing a lesson plan in science. And these are just some points that I just want to make that you are aware of. So the first thing to do is to always put a title, the date, the class and the time at the top of the, of the lesson plan. And then the next thing is to actually connect whatever your um, title is, connect it to the New Zealand curriculum. So go to the curriculum, find out where you what um, basically what achievement objectives that you want uh, that link with the with whatever whatever context you're using. So here you've got the living world, then there's planet Earth and beyond, physical world and material world. Now you may have one context that you're using, such as flight. And you might be using both the living world and the physical world, or you might be using planet Earth and beyond and material world. It, it, you, or you might just use one, but they can link together and you could be using two. The next thing to do is to also identify what part of the nature of science that you're using in your, in your lesson. So this could be investigating in science. You might be just doing an experiment. Or you might be using socio-scientific issues within your lesson plan. So please quote that. Then the next thing to do is to identify what key competencies that you're using. Sometimes this is this is um, overlooked in lesson plans. So just choose. There's five key com key competencies there. Just choose what you think. I mean, obviously. All of them are used really in, in teaching and learning, but there might be one or two that you're really targeting for this particular lesson. So, so state them and describe what they're talking about. The next thing is, uh, particularly for science, is the teaching approaches. So what kind of teaching approaches are you going to use in, the, in your lesson? You know, is it going to be transmission? You know, is there going to be sort of five or ten minutes of transmission? Is there, and that's basically you talking. Is there going to be some questioning and answers? Is there going to be discussion? Is there going to be some sort of prior knowledge that you're seeking from the students? Um, maybe it's discovery learning. Maybe you've got some stations around the room and you're getting the kids to uh, ask them, to invite them to sort of find out and, and, and have a look at some of the things around the room and just ask questions. That's what we call discovery learning. Or maybe you're doing process skills. Maybe, maybe you're just asking the students to measure things. So there's, there's, there's different types of approaches that we use in science lessons. Then comes science ideas. This is just brief, but it's good to write down in the lesson plan. That is, describe what kind of science ideas or concepts that you're trying to get across to the students. And these are scientific ideas, okay? And I mean, I'm not, you could write pages of this, but this is just a brief little detail about what science ideas there are in the lesson. Then the specific learning outcomes, that is, what, sciences, what science do I want the students to learn about? So what is it that you really want the students to actually get from this lesson? So identify that and describe it, write it down. Then the achievement criteria is, how will I know? How will I know whether the students have learned this? What 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 kind of indicators will I pick up? You know, will it will I have to listen to students? Will I go around and go to their stations and find out? Uh, will I ask them some questions? Will I use Kahoot? Will I uh, have a little questionnaire at the end? These are all things to find out how how they learn. Um, and then of course that goes on to assessment. So that's about. How, how I need to find out how they're learning so I can get some give them some feedback and feed forward to where their next steps are. So that's the start. That's the that's the sort of top end of your lesson plan. And then comes probably an, a part two. That is your learning activities. So usually a lesson plan is divided into two columns. I mean, you don't have to do this, but this is the you know, this is what I've used for many years. And this is where you write down the teacher moves. So you write down what the teacher is doing, and what the students are doing. So the, so you can see a kind of a plan, a plan, a sequence of events that's happening. And usually the best lessons are chopped up into sort of 10, you know, 10, 15 minute uh, 
lots. That's that's the most engaging lessons that you have. Okay, so they students never get bored. They're always moving on to new things and having a a change of pace is good. Write down any materials or equipment that you use. Write down any safety procedures that they need. So if you're doing an experiment, you know, do they need glass? Um, do they need protective eyewear? Do they need to have lab coats? Um, is there anything that could be hot? Is there anything, you know, that, that they they need to be aware of that make sure that they're safe, okay? That you need to tell them the rules about it. Then add any references to your lesson plan. That is any links, any YouTube links, any books that you've used and so on. So that's really important. And then at the end of a lesson, usually there's always a little, you know, a little bit of space there for any evaluation that you have. These are all reflections about, you know, has the lesson gone well? Maybe there are parts of the lesson that you're a little bit concerned about, all that sort of thing. So, you know, reflections are actually a really important part of a lesson plan. And you can do them actually before the lesson actually occurs. You can start that because you can start that process of actually reflecting on, on whether you think this is going to be good or, you know, how, you know, how, how the students are going to respond to this lesson. Now, just before you go... Some books. Books are really important because a lot of students come to me and they say, well, where do I start? How do I, how do I construct a lesson plan when I've got no ideas? Well, there are some really good websites. And, you know, look at the Science Learning Hub. That's a really wonderful start to using ideas. The other thing is using books. Find out, you know, get some books and find out what kind of books and references that you can use to help you give ideas you know the ESI ESA study guides they're great books they're all it's all content knowledge but they give you ideas about how you can introduce these ideas concepts to the students this one's on flight this is the um, building science concepts and it's 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 really a, a, a lovely, nice little booklet all on the aspects of flight and it gives you ideas then there's the science experiment book. There's loads of these books that you can find uh, in bookshops and in libraries. And they list different types of experiments that you can use uh, in junior classes. So I hope, I hope that helps. I hope it gives you some idea about how to, to set up your lesson plan. And don't forget, it's good to know what kind of students that you have in the class. So, you know, your lesson plan is designed around your, the knowledge of your learners. So knowing, knowing them can be very, very helpful. Knowing about them, where they're from, their prior knowledge is really important because it helps you, it helps you design and, and make sense of what you're going to do with them. Thanks.